considering the results that we found in the previous lecture, now we envisage a rigid sphere that has a radius equal to capital R, and this sphere is at rest relatively to a moving system, lowercase k, that I also used in the previous video. And by the way, this is Einstein's notation. The center of the sphere is located at the origin of this system of coordinates, lowercase k. The equation of the surface of the sphere that's moving relatively to the system capital K, remember, capital K is the fixed frame of reference, if you want. And the word fixed should be put in inverted commas. So, quote unquote fixed. And the velocity of lowercase k with respect to uppercase k is v. Then the equation of the sphere with respect to the system lowercase k is xi squared plus eta squared plus zeta squared equal to capital R squared, where xi, eta, and zeta are defined as in the previous lecture. So you might need to watch the previous lecture if you really want to understand the meaning of these terms. I'm not going to explain the meaning in this lecture as well. I will take for granted the Lorentz transformations that we derived in the previous video. If we express the equation of this surface by using x, y, z at time t equals zero, by using Lorentz transformations, it is very simple to see that this equation becomes x squared divided by square root of 1 minus v squared over c squared squared plus y squared plus z squared equal to capital R squared. Now, a rigid body, which is measured in a state of rest, has the form of a sphere in the system lowercase k, but as you can see, it has the shape of an ellipsoid of revolution. And the axes of the ellipsoid of revolution are r times the square root of 1 minus v squared over c squared, r and r. So you simply divide by r squared and you will get that the ellipsoid has this axis. Thus, whereas the y and z dimensions of the sphere do not appear modified by the motion of the sphere itself, the x dimension appears shortened. And it's very easy if you take a look at this expression here. It's multiplied, so the radius of the sphere is multiplied by this factor which is less than 1. And the radius of the sphere times this factor gives us the x-axis of the ellipsoid. For v equal to c, all moving objects viewed from the stationary, quote-unquote stationary, system shrivel up into plane figures. It is clear that the same results should also hold good if the bodies are at rest in the stationary system, viewed from a system in uniform motion. So, since we are talking about relativity, we are really concerned with relative motion. In this case, there is not really anything important about the system that we consider to be quote-unquote stationary and the system that we consider to be quote-unquote in motion. They are just moving with respect to each other, so that's the important thing to consider. Now we consider clocks. So these clocks that we consider should be qualified to mark the time t when the clock is at rest relatively to the stationary system. And we should also consider a clock that's qualified to mark the time tau when at rest relatively to the moving system. And we consider one of the two clocks to be located at the origin of the coordinates of lowercase k and should also be adjusted so that it marks the time tau. What is the rate of this clock when viewed from the stationary system? Now, between the quantities x, t, and tau, which refer to the position of the clock, we have, of course, this relation. x is equal to v times t because the clock is moving with respect to the 
uppercase K system. So it's fixed with respect to the moving system and the system is lowercase k. That's the moving system, which is moving with respect to the system uppercase k. And if we substitute this expression into the expression for tau, we get that tau is equal to 1 over square root of 1 minus v squared over c squared times d minus v over c squared. And this multiplies x here, but we can substitute in place of x from here v times t. So we can rewrite this simply as tau equal to t times the square root of 1 minus v squared over c squared. And this is an important expression. Why? Because from this it follows that the time marked by the clock viewed in the stationary system, remember, and the clock is at rest with respect to the moving system, and this time is tau, you can see that tau is slow by 1 minus square root of 1 minus v squared over c squared seconds per second. And this is due to the fact that we can also rewrite the expression above as tau equal to t minus 1 minus square root of 1 minus v squared over c squared times t, like this. So when the clock that's measuring t measures one second, so this is the clock at rest with respect to the stationary system, the clock that's supposed to measure tau, so this clock is at rest with respect to the moving system, loses 1 minus square root of 1 minus v squared over c squared seconds with respect to t, that is the stationary clock.